All right, guys, this is an ABS lock. I've never heard of it before. I got it from Paul Silver. This used to be on his front door. He replaced it. Said the core was getting a little bit sticky with the key. And he recommended I shoot some WD-40. I have not done that yet. I have been playing with this lock and discovered a few things about it. First of all, it is a five pinner. It is pin and pin. Um, it has an anti-snap feature here. Uh, I don't have a snapping tool, otherwise we might get a chance to demonstrate that, but this would be the sacrificial break right here. It would break off, pre uh, preventing somebody from snapping this lock. Uh, on the inside, Mar um, you have no, no pins. It's not fully pinned up, but it is, certainly is on the exterior. It looks like there's some hardened elements right there. <clears throat> so when we poke those two pins out, it looks like that lock might very well come apart. Uh, it's marked exterior, so we make sure we get it on the right side. You can see the weathering. It's been uh, installed before. You see something unusual here. Um, first of all, I did look this up on the internet, and I have been playing with it a little bit. There are six trap pins, and these are spring-loaded. So when we turn the core without the key in it, apparently there's some slots machined in the core, and these little guys will fall into them if the key is not in um, and also there's three on this side. Also, they'll fall into the keyway. So I would imagine when this turns, those fall in the keyway, and then the pins will then align. Maybe the inner pins will align with the three on this side. So if we get it picked, uh, that's something we're going to have to face. The other thing, and this is a very strong hint from uh, Paul, he said don't pick it oriented like this, like you would find it in Europe. He said... Um, if you turn it upside down, you can, you'll can you understand why. So I'm going to put this next to the microphone and kind of shake it. And I hope you can hear that, but there's something clicking around in there. Sounds like maybe a ball bearing. Um, when I was picking it, I could not feel anything in pin 5. So I suspect that there's a ball bearing there. And maybe in this key, there's some kind of magnetic element. So when it's oriented correctly and you slide this in, the magnet will pull that ball bearing up into the core, allowing it to rotate. If it's located, if it's like this, however, that ball bearing will already automatically fall into the core, which means I've only got to pick those first four pins. Now they are pin and pin. I did discover that in my trial and error and uh, not an easy lock. I can, I can assure you, but if you've got patience and want to stay with me and see how this thing works, let me get it clamped up and we'll do it together. All right, I've got him mounted upside down, so if there's a ball bearing, he's fallen down into the core. So I've only got four pins, I believe, to pick. I'm going to take my fat tension wrench, just stick him right there. It's tight working space, not the greatest view. I apologize for that, but uh, we got what we got. I'm going to use a standard flag from the Sauber kit. Apply light tension on the top. Try to keep my hand as, out of the way as much as I can. Slide him down the right side here, and see what we got. Pin one, binding. Now these are pin and pin, so I'm actually just pushing them against the rounded part of the outer pin, and I got a little turn on the core there. I don't want to pick the inners yet. Okay, I'm on pin two, outer pin. A little more turn on the core. Uh, pin three, we're getting these in order. Very slight turn there. Let me check these guys. Everybody's good. Pin four. Come on. Okay, that was pin four. I got a little turn on the core. That's good. Fault set. That tiny click you just heard was pin one, inner pin. I feel nothing on five at all. So if there's a ball bearing there, I just can't feel him. All right, for you guys who've been patient enough to stick with me so far, I'm gonna show you a new trick. I think I just overset pin one inner pin. 
So a lot of times, you know, we've done a lot of work so far. I don't want to give it up. We do have a good fault set going. Uh, I probably just overset them. I want them to come back down, and I'm going to give them a chance to do that without doing a complete reset. A lot of times you can just take the handle of your pick, and you can just kind of tap on the front. Or if you have something heavier, like um, just slightly heavier, this is a handle from a Husky. This is my Phillips screwdriver. You can just give them a little tap. Not, not a super tap, just a little tap. And sometimes you can knock that pin back. He'll come back down. Just lighten on your tension. And sometimes he will come back down. Give you another try. Dang it. I don't think I just, just did pin one again. I think I overset him again. All right, let's try it one more time. Try to bring him back down. And there we go. We got a fault set. Check it out. I mean, it just went really deep. All right. So maybe, I don't know, work, maybe I overset him and he worked him way, his way down to the right position. All right. Now we're well on our way to getting a getting into deep trouble because as soon as we go much further, those trap pins are going to trap us. But let's go ahead and do that. So right now, I believe one of the inner pins will be manipulating the uh, trap pins. And there we go. Oh, got my pin stuck. All right, now we're going to go down. Now I want to show you something. Let me pull this guy out. Let me zoom out so the focus will work correctly. Now if you take a very close look at these little guys right here, notice how they're starting. That one's not down yet. These two have already started to pop down. And look closely, they're serrated. And I don't know about the, the three on the other side are still flush, so they haven't gone yet. So let's just go a little further. And we are stuck right here. We're caught in a trap. Let me set my screwdriver down. We're not going anywhere. So if you've attempted to pick this and you don't have a lot of time to give to it, you are in some deep trouble. But there's a way out of it. Uh, you notice we have those two guys to pick. So I'm going to put him back into the vise. I am going to keep my tension wrench. I'm going to put him back on this side and keep going in a counterclockwise. Now I'm going to take my pick and I'm going to go down here and I believe it's the inner pins that will now directly affect those trap pins. So light tension, and let's see if we can work them back where they belong. Okay, I'm getting counter rotation. Okay, that's good. More counter rotation. That's good. Now, flip this baby around like so, and now we are again trapped. All right, let's take a look and see where we're trapped. These three guys are flush. These guys are not. Now notice how those little heads of those pins are now cockeyed on a couple of them. They're free floating. So if you put too much tension, they'll get cockeyed and they'll never go back into position. You really have to watch your tension on these guys. So let's put them back in there. And now I'm going to, the pins are actually now here located with the keyway. So again, we're going to keep going counterclockwise and I'm going to take my knife because I don't have to pick these guys. I hope I can just slide it in there and push them out of the way and go just like that. And now we're trapped again. We have the pins. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a tricky lock, guys. Now we have the pins on the left that have now gone back down. And if you take a look at the right, now we got to fight both sides. So I don't know which is first. So let's put that tension wrench back in there. We're going to keep going in the counterclockwise direction. Um, I'm going to put him here first and check and see which side needs to be picked. I'm going to try to pick the ones up here first using the pins. 
and they are not binding. So that tells me these two guys are holding it up. So again, I'm going to put my tension wrench in, in the center here. I'm going to take my knife, slide it down there, and just push them out of the way so now we can rotate. Now those guys are caught. Now they're deep, deep inside of there. So now i got to fight them using the pins. Is this incredible or what? Again, I'm going to put my tension wrench right here. Take my flat flag. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And then go down the, and use the inner pins to pick those trap pins. There we go. Counter rotation. Can't use too much counter rotation or the traps on the other side will fall. Pin three feels like counter rotation. And there we go. We are back. That's one rotation. <laughs> What an evil, evil, evil lock. All right, I know you guys want to see this, the inside of this, as much as I do. Um, I'm already at eight minutes, so what I'm probably going to do, I don't know how to disassemble this. I'm going to go ahead and do it on camera, and I might just hit the fast forward, see how long it takes. I'm going to try to pull these two pins out right here. Let me get my beater block. No dice. Try to punch them from this side. One, two, all right, let me get the pinning tray. Okay, this thing should now, let me unzoom it. Oops, other way, Bill. Should slide apart. Maybe. Sure is a precision fit. I'll give it that. Okay, we're still dealing with the exterior part, so I'm going to take the interior one and just lay them down. Uh, yeah, man, I can handle that. Okay, we do have a key. Let's take a look at this key. Let me get my pocket knife. By the way, I have a new pocket knife. <laughs> can you believe it? This uh, actually is courtesy of Herr Vischer from Switzerland. Swiss Army Knife, all the way from Switzerland. He sent me a, I'll try to keep that in camera, in, po uh, in frame, picture of Switzerland. He said, and I'm making this up, his Great, 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 grandfather fought in the Togenberg War, otherwise known as the Swiss Civil War, in 1712. And the theory is he actually carried this. He was the keymeister. And there's some keys. I'm totally making that up, but this did come from Switzerland. And thank you, Herr Vischer. I appreciate it. All right, enough of that. Let's cut the key. Quit making up stories. This is what happens when you're in the shop by yourself for way too long. Come on. There's trap pins on the key, too. <laughs> Come on. Probably need to sharpen that. It's been around since 1712. So, yep, here we go. Awesome. So there's all of our pin and pins. That's probably right there, pin four, while it's having so much trouble. Way, both of those are way cut high. That last one, that is definitely a magnet. So he probably, there's probably a ball bearing inside of there. All right, enough of that. Let's take a look inside. I am just going to pop that dude like that. I'm going to take that key. Maybe. Uh piece of tape still on him. I 
All right, try that again. Oh, too far. There we go. All right, I'm getting a little nervous now because I really don't know what's going to pop out of here. I don't know what these little guys on the side are going to do. No clue. So make sure we got the right size. Yes, we do. I am going to take a shim. Let him ride this bridge. All right, try that again. Just a tip. I'm, I'm not going to ask for credit for this thing now. Don't buy your camera batteries from Chinese manufacturers on eBay. They don't last as long. All right, we're going to let that ride the bridge. I'm going to slide this out and hope for the best. And already we're jammed up. Something's not quite right. And I can't go back. What in the world is holding things up? Okay, the trap pin almost went down that gap. So I'm going to try to push him back. And he is not working. We've got a little indentation, a little ball bearing there on that side. I don't know if he falls out. Yeah, he does. So let's just get rid of him right now. I don't think that's what's holding things up. Ah, there's what's holding things up. Those little guys, they've completely fallen out. Come on, get back in there. No, he's cockeyed. See how he gets... Come on, get in there. You too. There we go. All right, let's find a better angle. What if we turned it like that? And that way it would be solid all along the top. No gaps or anything to fall into, hopefully. And we will find out if that's going to work. Um, where did the shim go? I don't think that shim is going to be wide enough, though, to cover all of that. Definitely not. All right, just hope for the best. What are you going to do? That's... I'm pretty sure those side pins, those little traps are going to fall in those gaps. I'm sure of it. Why guess, Bill? And of course it's made with good precision, so you're not going to be able to shim them probably. Oh, uh, yes you will. Maybe one more. Maybe. Come on. Let there be just enough for that to get in there. Come on. Come on. Give me a break. Okay, there's one. There's two. Might be all we get, guys. All right, I'm going to hope for the best. Let's try it. I've already screwed up so many ways from Sunday going this way. All right, let's try it. Okay, where are the pins? There they are. And success. All right. That was two shims. No wonder you had trouble getting that in there. All right. Okay, five definitely. Oh, look at that. So what happens? Ah... Uh, Check out that pin five. Notice how that magnet sucked him down in there. There's a little spring. So let's put him back in there. So he just kind of hangs there like that until you, come on, focus. Until you slide that key in and then that magnet sucks him right down to break, 
break the shear line. Isn't that cool? Let me put my finger here. There were two pins. Looks like three pins on the bottom as well. I know because this guy fell out. I didn't even have to pick him. I didn't do anything to those guys. No idea. Uh, they're not... They don't even go into the key. Dead end. We'll, we'll experiment with those in a minute. Alright, let's look at these guys upstairs. Okay, there's our spring-loaded guy. So that was pin 5, inner pin. Get out of the way, you. Outer pin. He's not even coming out. So that's fixed. Pin 5 doesn't even come out. The outer pin doesn't have to be picked. He's probably flush with the bottom. His only job is to hold that spring. He looks to even be non-magnetic. All right. Stop clapping your lips, Bill. Okay, four, three, two, and one. Yeah, that does not want to come out of there. Oop, get the beater. Yep, he's not coming out. So his only job is to hold that magnetic pin. Look at all the counter drills in there, or anti-drill pins. What a high security lock. You are never going to drill this thing out. I'm curious what those in the bottom were for. They weren't spring loaded. They were just kind of, just kind of sitting there. Um, let's look at the core. Pull these guys out. Now comes the fun. This is when everything shoots out into your eye. Okay, we, we have three things going to happen at once. We have the two side pins are going to spring out, and then we have the driver pin. So, there's one of the little tiny little side pins. Put him right there. Here's pin number one with this spring. It's a double spring. Obviously, one for the inner pin and one for the outer. And we should have one more baby pin. Put him right there. Next one, just another pin and pin, inner and outer. Come on. All right, pin three. Okay, we have this the snap ring. I don't know if that is supposed to come out yet. He acts like he wants to come out, and he does. All right, the next one, we're going to get some more inner pins that are going to pop out. One, two, three. I'll take the big one first, double pins, double springs, and I'm just going to dump them in my hand. Should be one more in there. There is. He's not quite popped out. Oh, man, I need another hand. All right, where was he? Right here? Inner outer. And baby pin. We're still, there's the other baby pin. Come here, you. You guys know this is never going back together, right? There's our other baby pin. Inner outer. These guys are all serrated. And the next one is going to be three more, two baby pins, and what a mess. What a nightmare to try to put back together. My goodness. It's two little side pin, trap pins, and the, let's see, he goes right here. Did I just lose another pin? Two, three, four. Okay, this was five. So five was this guy. Sorry about that. I knew he was there for a reason. And all these little baby ones are just a little trap pin. Six of them. What a nightmare. I, I will never get this back together. There's no question. I don't have enough tools. I don't have enough technology. This was built on a different planet. Anyway, there you go, guys. You will never pick this thing in the UK where it's assembled correctly, where it's oriented uh, with, actually, with the pins oriented down. You will not get it picked. Um, 
but I got lucky and I defeated it by turning it upside down. I would never be able to do this otherwise. There's what we're looking at, guys. I'm not even going to try to straighten this mess up. You guys saw it before. These are all pin and pins. And then upstairs we had some serrated ones and also all pin and pin, of course. Uh, the last one is magnetic and it attracts very nicely to the key. All right, guys, there you go. Paul Silver, thank you, sir. I'm not going to be able to snap this now. Apologize, but I thought it would be more interesting to take a look at one of the very rare uh, locks that contains not one trap, but four traps to get one complete rotation. Ten minutes plus the intro, not that bad, but definitely not going to win any races. Thanks, guys, for your patience. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Stay safe, guys. Stay legal.